So this is the second generation of the Buick Envision, a Chinese-made Buick product, because Buick yes. survives because China likes Buick. Yes, they do. There's no commentary on the build quality. This doesn't feel any better built or constructed than any GM vehicle built anywhere else. It doesn't feel better or worse. Neither it just here nor fine. there. Absolutely agree. It's yes. just yes. fine. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. The styling is absolutely the best part about this car. It looks great. There are no more triple portholes anywhere to be found. Mm. There's no hint of them anywhere, not even on the hood, like, yeah, we're trying to revive the retro yesteryear. There's none of that. It feels like a fresh take mm -hmm. on what Buick is doing, the Buick brand, because you saw in 2018 that Inspire, not Inspire, Inspire, the uh. very poorly contrived word to reimagine what the future of Buick will be like, and everybody went, yeah, yeah, do that, do that. Buick with its own flavor and its own mm -hmm. styling. Until we came to the same kind of GM think where this has to be just a rebadged Equinox or Terrain or yeah. everything yeah. else. And so what sets this apart from everything else in the market? This is the most competitive market segment. Yes, it is. Five Indeed. seat, they're listed as compacts, but these five seat, I would call them midsize because they are pretty big. Sure, sure. SUVs, CUVs, this yeah. is the most competitive market. I could sit here and probably take five minutes and just try to list all the ones that are made up and actually would forget half of them. There's yeah. that many. It is hard to stand out. Now, China, mm -hmm. as a market, likes Buick because the younger car buyer in China looks at all of the established luxury brands as old people's cars. Isn't this yes, ironic? Yes. The Chinese younger rich person looks at Buick and says, that's a car for a young person. We in the U.S. go, Buick is for old people. It's the exact yep. opposite, which is yep. why the Buick brand survived when GM culled all their brands. How crazy is that? They kept it because it's successful in China. The first version of this uh, car was not very well received because it felt like something for the Chinese market only. This at least Which feels like a global lies. car. It is for the most part, but primarily it's for the Chinese domestic market and North America yes. and the US. And it works, to your point, it works for the young people in China and the old people in the US. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It feels like a lesser Lexus. That is a market niche for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's start with GM. As far as this standing out among GM product, why, why have this styling? As far as this having going up against all the other lesser competitors, all the forgettable competitors that I think drive better than this, mm. what stands out about this? Styling, proof that you can sell yeah. cars yeah. and make them appealing based on styling. Because I saw this and I thought, Buick made a little Macan. It looks great. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. And I think this interior design is yeah. also good. And they've gone to it is. It a 10.2 inch screen, which they're very excited about, which is interesting because one of their primary competitors, the Mazda CX-5, mm -hmm. just this year for the 2021 model, also went to a 10.2 inch screen. 10.2 is the magic number. That's apparently. the magic number. But So Buick's excited about how much bigger it is. And it is nice and it's angled toward the driver and it works fine. We don't have any of the weird Cadillac, why is this, can this be operated four different ways? But <laughs> right. it's fine. Let's start with the driving. Let's start with the powertrain. Okay, yeah. Good two one. liter, inline four, turbocharged, 228 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. Which is just the That's check boxes for this market segment. Every vehicle in this market. That's also why they couldn't do portholes because there'll only be two on either side. That just doesn't look right because mm. it's a four cylinder. So they just decided no portholes. I'm fine with that, no portholes. <laughs> Agreed. Right? There's gotta be some kind of flavor. There's gotta be a characteristic. Mm. And as soon as you put it in sport mode, it's a yep. tiny bit of throttle response yep. and a little bit more resistance in the steering. Mm -hmm. It's almost to the point where leave sport mode off. Yep. If it doesn't yep. turn it into a sporty vehicle, let's just let it go. What, do we, what do we have it for? Let it That's go. a fair point. Yeah, I don't I care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you're considering this, you're attracted to the styling, you're attracted to the price of $41,000, but in this segment, you can do better. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. There's not that much space in the back seats. There's some space in the rear. But as far as this competing against a Terrain and an Equinox, I still can't come to buy this unless you're attracted to the styling and that's it. Sure, sure. And it does look great. And I don't think you're going to see a ton of these. I mean, maybe they're all over China for all I know. They're all over China. I don't think you're going to see a ton of yeah. these. I think you're going to be making a unique choice. But you're making a unique choice 
almost in the dead center of this market segment. There's nothing about this that I'm really like, that's awful. And there's nothing about it I'm like, that's yeah. great. It's yeah. just, it's fine. It's fine in every category. It's fine. It's absolutely yeah. the dead middle of this market segment, which is a vast market segment. Well, the driving experience on this doesn't encourage you to do anything extra special. Yep. Despite looking as good as it does, it doesn't say, hey, this is a standout. When you start driving, there's not one particular category that Buick as a brand went mm, after mm. to differentiate this from all of its long list of competitors. Yeah. We're, we're going to set ourselves apart for handling. The power is going to be amazing. The power is amazing. You can get this in all-wheel drive. We're currently driving the front-wheel drive flavor yes, here. Yeah. What about it? You know, Acura, super handling all-wheel drive. It's got mm -hmm. something to really differentiate that. I'm nonplussed. Putting in park. It does have a unique gearbox selector compared to a lot of other GM vehicles. I, I will give them that. And it's also not mounted up here somewhere in Weirdnessville. <laughs> I need to you shift. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Downshift, downshift. <laughs> like a Suburban or a Tahoe. It does actually have paddles on the steering wheel, though I'm not sure it's necessary, but they are actual yeah. paddles. See, Fair. it's not sporty. Unless you're going to lean into it completely it. Right. and let's just die. I see that. But I do see that. what about yep. this? Yep. Has Buick leaned into completely other than competing as the brand? This is mm. now a modern day example of badge engineering. I just don't see the point of buying this. I wanted there to be some sort of revival at Buick and I go, wow, buy this car over anything else. Every car at this price point will have all the same features, all mm -hmm. the same safety features, mm -hmm. the same kind of tech. This car is built on the Global B architecture platform, which is just the, the connectivity for software and hardware and all the stuff. So you recognize this out of the Corvette. Mm -hmm. This chassis is shared with the X-T4 from Cadillac. Yes. Yes. So it, it definitely exists other places at GM as well, as you've said already. I don't really have any issues with the interior. I think it's a nice shape. This substance feels exactly like what Volkswagen is doing in the Golf right now. The material, where it's like the soft, it's got molded, some interesting plastic. lines. It's got some very good lines. This clearly comes in as one big piece. This interior feels like they learned from molding parts for the C8, <laughs> and now they know how to do complex. We shapes learned some for the things. Interior. We want to for apply sure, that elsewhere. For sure, right. I think that's absolutely the case. The lower you get in the cabin, the more it starts to feel cheap. Forty-two thousand dollars for this spec like this is on the upper end of the category. It though. really is. That's the thing. If it's going to be the upper end of the category for cost, where is this like, oh, but you have to get the Buick because, hmm. Let's walk around the car real quick. The architecture dictates this longer front overhang, but the lines and the surfaces really sensitive. Mm. Sighting down the side of the car and looking at trim pieces and looking at door gaps, it's all fine. Mm -hmm. There's great. nothing to looks pick great. at. Wow, that's a nice character line. That really outlines that mm. rear tail light design. It's kind of got a Mazda kind of sensibility Very to it. much Mazda. Looks like Not an we're execution, looking... but a sensibility. It looks a lot like Mazda's build. But then when you start driving, it doesn't encourage any category to do more, as you're about to find out. Okay. I'm going to go somewhere that Buick probably wishes I wouldn't. Okay, calling them out. And that is, bit, if we're going to talk about this being the best selling, most crowded market segment, mm -hmm. I want to talk about things this competes with that I think you end up choosing instead of this. The Mazda CX-5. That is one of our very favorite on my list. And a huge standout in this market. Yep. The Mazda CX-5 technically is smaller than this exterior wise. Mm -hmm. But in every measurable metric, it has more cabin space. Also, yeah. you sit down and try to make a Mazda CX-5 this expensive, I don't think you're going to get there. The Grand Touring Reserve Super Special We're talking paint, 38, 39. All wheel drive, yes. which this doesn't have. This is almost dead center in the middle of the range, and it is almost $42,000. Yep. You can't touch 40 with a CX-5. Fully, and the interior fully, fully, yeah. quality of that is nicer. It's jewelry in comparison to this. Yep. And there's a little bit more space, and it feels a little lighter on its feet. This is pretty heavy, too. Mm -hmm. 3,700 okay. pounds or so. Almost 38. Yeah. Because the CX-5 does this market segment better and is cheaper. Now, let's say you're shopping brand, so you want a luxury brand. Okay. Okay? Well, Mazda doesn't qualify. I have one for you. Okay. Acura RDX. That's another one on my list. Because the Acura RDX 
is about this price, maybe a couple thousand dollars more, maybe above this, in the same amount, this is above the CX-5. Sure. So maybe you're spending 45. Sure. But the RDX is the hidden one in this market segment because Completely it's agree. almost a Porsche Macan. If you want a luxury brand with more driving experience, you go RDX for a couple thousand more, but you want it to be a little bit nicer and still drive better, you can go cheaper and all wheel drive and get the CX-5. Yep. The one thing luxurious I feel like this has accomplished is they are very concerned about noise. Indeed. They have isolated this like crazy. And here's what's interesting. Cars are going by us on both sides. It's difficult to hear other traffic. It's what's good. interesting though is you hear quite a bit of wind noise and quite a bit of tire noise. You hear yeah. your noise. Sure. You don't hear anybody else's noise. And I find that odd. I would think if you're gonna isolate, I'd be isolated in general. Tire noise is a little bit Tire tough noise is hard. To tire noise is hard. But I find it control. interesting because you're driving yeah. along almost like you're wearing noise canceling headphones. There's a constant low end hiss that is all the stuff you're creating with the wind noise and the tire I can noise. Hear it. But you can't hear the cars going by. It's a very interesting mix. Well, I'm glad you pointed that out because this is Buick's quiet tuning. Yes. Quiet tuning mm -hmm. technology. Let's brand name everything we can. It comes from some sort can we get a contrived TM? acronym. Can we get a TM on that? How it long is. do we get the registered it trademark? Yes. Quiet tuning. It means active noise cancellation while you're driving. Yep. To isolate you. That's kind of a Lexus trademark feature. True, true, true. Quiet insulate you from the road. I noticed acoustically insulated double pane glass. Yep. This isn't a Mercedes S-Class BMW 7 Series, but double pane glass, Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So it if is. you're looking for those kinds of things, the sound deading materials in the engine, the engine mounts, dampening the vibration, yep. all those kinds of things are the only thing we can point to as the Buick hallmark to compete in this category. If that is what you're looking for, it's about the ride experience. Mm -hmm. It's not about the driving. There's nothing here that is no. interesting or engaging whatsoever. My list is longer though. Mm. I went to the upcoming Hyundai Tucson, about the same price. And by the okay. way, where's my sunroof? Yeah, for forty-two thousand dollars, where is your sunroof? I, by the way, I I'm do asking. agree with that. You're right. Yep. How about the new Sorento? Sorento for about is the same about price. the same price, and it's larger and more usable than yes. This. There's features on all of the rest of these that are sort of quirky and engaging and mm. interesting and fun and delight and all those things that I'm not finding on the Buick. This is nicer than the standard Toyota Rav4 right now. But for forty-two thousand dollars, you can get the prime. You can get and the, the prime. And the prime is fantastic the and brilliant. definitely above this. Yes. You <laughs> don't buy this for handling. I understand no. that. This has a very soft, almost like a traditional Buick ride. It's very it's soft. It's about the riding on the road. experience. It's just it just soaks everything up. But that also means there is incredible body roll. Yeah. And you introduce yeah. it to a corner and it's it's just wallowy and imprecise. If you're doing a cross-country road trip and you're going straight line with the cruise control on, you're never going to notice that. But we like to introduce all the cars we get to these crazy things called corners. This does not like it. Or the anything CX -5, fun, anything the, engaging. The CX-5 is great in the corners. The RAV4 Prime is good in the corners. The RDX is superb in the corners. Absolutely. These are all around the same price, but this is fine. I'll take a oh. used Porsche Macan. I'll take an X3. The aforementioned list of everything else. <laughs> How about a used Alfa Stelvio? Uh, yeah. Interesting, at least. Interesting. I, people that go. are going to buy a Buick are never going to go Stelvio, but I do take your point. But if we're shopping, how about a Jaguar E-Pace? Whoa. I mean, now you're being controversial. Yeah, I take your point. Kind of a rear wheel drive feel, yeah, a little bit yeah, better yeah. handling manners. How about a Volvo XC40 or XC90? You could get that for this price. If we're really competing, Buick, what stands out besides me feeling your Monday morning meeting thinking we got to have something built on that platform with a Buick badge on it? Yeah. And the problem is I'm wrong. They are selling. Of course they are. We are wrong. Yeah, you're they right. They sell. They're yeah. selling in China. They're selling to grandparents of the world because they didn't really want to reject an image with a Lexus. So Buick Envision it is. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, you're right because what this does is it allows Buick to say, we have an offering in that market segment. And they if the do. market segment's going to sell like crazy, Buick really ought to have one. Oh, look, we do. <laughs> Yay us. If the Buick brand, and we know it is, is successful in China and has a mystique in China, then Buick mm -hmm. has to offer something in this class. And it will sell because people are going to go, oh, but I have to get a Buick. Yes. Which is not something that typically is said here in the U.S. But there's <laughs> plenty of people in the U.S. Let's put, put it another way that says, Never, yeah. I only am going to buy a Lexus. That uh -huh. exists here. That absolutely and exists. And so if this is the reason why Buick has to have this, I, I'm with you on your 
original point, and that is you would like to see, if you're going to compete in the most competitive area of cars right now, you did something where we just go, huh, that's really cool. And all I can come up with is a split center console and I can't hear cars around me. At and least you didn't it. disturb me while you were opening I know. your half of the center that's, console. That's all I've got. I've got a split center console and quiet tuning, which by the way, didn't silence the hum of the wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Just confused here's and, the reason. and disappointed. Yeah. So here's the reason this exists. It's because everyone else forced Buick to have one, mm. to build one, mm -hmm. because Buick still exists as a brand. And the big problem is we're wrong. They do sell. They yeah. will sell. Yeah. They're selling out in China. At least you didn't disturb me. I'm telling you. I'm fully undisturbed. I'm tell look, I'm gonna, see, see, look at uh, your access. I can bury my whole arm. You could. And you don't even have to worry about it. Look, we have, have a marmot living right there. Marmot! See him? Marmot!